Hope It Helps podcast where we together find the calm amidst the chaos of everyday life. Derek Evans here, your host from hopeithelps.org. Today we're talking about givers, receivers, and of course takers. Um, What's interesting is that we have this habit of kind of combining giving and receiving together as though uh, in any situation where someone is giving then someone else has to be receiving. But this isn't true. Giving is one thing. Receiving, something completely different. They're, they're independent of one another, 100%. We've all experienced this, you know, when we give and someone doesn't receive. You know, for example, we give someone our attention, they don't receive it. We give them a gift, they clearly don't want it, they cast aside meaninglessly. They may not be malicious about it, but there's no receiving involved because receiving is something that takes attention itself and intention. The third mode is taking. Um, there's nothing pretty about taking, but it does provide an opportunity for us to work on ourselves. Um, if we're forced to interact on a regular basis with a taker, it is something that really reminds you of number one, maybe how you don't want to be, but also of the fact that there's all possibilities out there and that um, this is something that if it tests you, then you know it's a soft spot for you. Maybe deep down you, you feel that you're a taker or you've been a taker or you are a taker sometimes. And so um, it, it is a good thing for us. And we also can have compassion for the taker as well because I'm sure they don't want to be a taker but there's a lot of them out there. So kind of setting up the fact that the each are different things, we can look at each one differently. So for example, when it comes to giving or giving with meaning, I should say, we typically, no matter who we are, we identify with whichever mode is natural for us. For me, by default, I'm a giver. It just seems right to me. It just feels right. Um, But giving can have less emotional investment than receiving, which is, you know, receiving is is, is tough. The material aspects of giving have no value on the cosmic calculator, meaning that the value is based on how much intention Um, and love and attention is behind the giving. So for example, if a rich man pulls up to a homeless person, reaches into his pocket, you know, grabs a crisp hundred dollar bill, throws it at the guy and then drives off, it may seem as though he's been, that he's a giver and that he's giving. However, if he doesn't feel anything behind it, then there's no cosmic energy there. This is not giving. This is just simply transferring material energy because money is material energy. And that's all you're doing in that case. You're just transferring material energy. A lot of very wealthy people say, well, you know, I give a lot of money to the poor. Warren Buffett's a good example. There's a guy who gives literally a billion dollars a year to charity. And some people say, man, he's really generous. That's amazing. I don't care how wealthy you are giving away a billion dollars. That's really generous. And there's no way to argue that. Of course it is. The only question I have is, is how much does he care? You have to assume you care a lot. Because if your whole life's been about making money and you're willing to give away a fortune, literally, you would assume that you have to really care. But I don't know. And that, that would be the question me to figure out if he's really a giver or if he's just a transfer of material energy. Now, on the other hand, um, if there's a a man himself who's homeless, for example, who comes up to the same homeless person the rich man came up to and didn't have anything to offer other than his attention and friendship, items that don't cost anything other than your own personal energy, this is giving for sure the good news is about kind of understanding this concept is that we don't need money or materials 
to be extraordinary givers. The best gifts we can give are the gifts of our own attention, our own affection, our appreciation, and of course, our love. They cost no money and they have a major impact. And the only thing holding us back from being great givers is us. We all have what it takes to be great givers. We all have what it takes to be great givers. It's pretty exciting. Of course, giving that involves materials is not always a bad thing. And I don't want you to think that if you're giving materials to people or you're supporting um, you know, the children, um, I forget what they're called, but it's a uh, children international or something like that, where you can, you can donate. I've got it right here as I'm, I'm supporting one of those children and, um, with money, but there's, there's energy behind it. So in other words, you know, a lot of people give money or food or stuffed animals, clothing, material items every day. Well, what matters is what's behind the giving. So if you if you give with pure intent, care and love, if you really care, if you really care, then there's cosmic energy present. This is very much giving and it is meaningful and it is positive. So it's okay to give materials, but just not materials alone. It doesn't have the same energy. And I'm not talking about the energy that's going to return to you. You know, that's, that's one of the things that drives me crazy about a lot of times you hear people talk about giving and receiving. They'll tell you, they'll justify giving. They'll say, you should give, you should give, you should give, because that's how you're going to get the most. Well, if your end goal is to try to get from giving, then there's no cosmic energy there. You have to give with absolutely no expectation. I mean, literally no expectation. And if you do that, then you're going to be giving a lot of times and see that you get absolutely nothing back for it, or at least that you can tell. So if you if you start to give with the idea that you're going to receive something, then you know there's going to be a lot of times that you're disappointed or that doesn't actually work out. And you shouldn't be disappointed when you give. If you're disappointed when you give, then you're not really giving for the right reason. Because just the act of giving alone should be enough. It really should. Receiving is tough. Receiving is the most difficult item for me truly being a, a gracious and, and humble receiver doesn't come naturally to most of us, especially me. Uh, my natural reaction when someone tries to give me something is to simply not allow it. You know, if someone tries to buy my lunch, a colleague, for example, I always protest and try to buy the meal. If someone brings me a gift or sends me something special for helping them out, I immediately plead with them that, hey, I have everything I need. You should give this to someone else in greater need. Give it to charity. When Christmas rolls around, I tell everybody, don't buy me a thing. I don't want anything. And it's not because I don't want anything or I don't want their love or I don't want their attention. I just feel that it's all very material and, and I, I'm not interested in that energy. And I am okay. And if you, have, if you want to give someone material, give it to someone who might need it. But it's really because I'm naturally comfortable in the role of giver and naturally uncomfortable in the role of receiver. Amazingly, for almost all of my life, I was unable to see what was really happening. I was actually denying people the opportunity to be a giver and to give to me in the way that I enjoy giving to others so selfish. I was clogging the cosmic energy that was genuinely coming my direction. I mean, what a huge difference this made when I realized it. Now, no matter what, I go out of my way to graciously receive any gift that is given, even if I don't need it or have any use for it. It's not about the gift itself. And that's the thing. People always say it's not about the gift. It's the thought that matters so true because it's not about the gift it's about the intention the attention and the love that the gift represents that's what you're accepting that's what you're embracing 
when you receive a gift is what it represents, not what it is. And this makes it a lot easier and a lot more meaningful to receive gifts. Because a lot of times, what, what happens, little kids will give us something. They may give us something that is already ours, or they may give us something they just found on the ground. Or, But if, if you can tell that they're giving it to you because they genuinely believe that you would like it, they want to give it to you, it has just as much meaning as any other gift you'll ever receive. So let's talk about takers. Takers take, man. That's what they do. Of course, you know, being a good receiver is very different from being a taker. We all know at least one taker in our lives. This is the person who, yeah, I mean, they don't necessarily receive well. They might receive well. They might. But they're always looking to take. And it never stops. The problem with takers arise often, but especially if they are in close and regular interaction with the giver. There's only so much one person can give, but you can t always take more. You can take and take and take and take and take and take and take. I know because I was married to a taker. And it's, it's endless. It's endless sometimes. And what can happen in these situations is that it could cause genuine givers to question whether or not they should be doing what they're doing. Maybe they should change their ways. And sometimes... Givers will create boundaries around their giving after an encounter or a long period of time involved with the taker. This is not the right way to go, though. Takers will continue to take because it is what has worked for them. In this life, taking has worked for them. We're all doing the best we can with the consciousness we have in the current moment. We all are. It's just a matter of how can we expand that consciousness? How can we expand our awareness? So if you're wondering how to deal with takers, the solution for takers is greater awareness of their actions, which is the solution for almost all problems, for all of us, greater awareness. Trying to change who we are, put boundaries around what gives us joy in an attempt to change who they are is definitely not the solution. So, always be yourself. Never change who you are in the hopes that you can change someone else. Be that change that you want to see in the world. As Gandhi so eloquently put it. Just like with children, we should always lead by example. And people will take advantage of you. If you're a giver, they will. But that's not on you. That's on them. If you're a good receiver, then you'll notice more people uh, being generous. More and more people will become givers to you. Dealing with takers, however, can seem like a no-win situation. Fortunately, every taker has a giver inside them. So if we can lead by example, if we can be that change, it may take a long time, but if we can show someone the true joy of giving as we genuinely express it and genuinely experience the joy of giving right in front of them directly with them on a regular basis there's no way they can avoid the effects of such positive energy transfer such pure cosmic energy pure love is what it is well, here's to you in becoming a great giver, a meaningful giver, an amazing receiver, and never changing who you are in an attempt to try to change someone else. Happy meditating. I really hope it helps. Namaste.